Friends, I want to thank you for the opportunity to share some words with you today. And I want to thank you all for the work you do in your communities. Each and every one of you contributes to making your community a better place. You contribute to making workers safer and fighting for the rights of working people. I just want to thank you for everything that you do. A huge acknowledgement of the leadership of COPE and every member, you are all so amazing. I want to also acknowledge the territories that I'm speaking to you from. Today, I'm speaking to you from the territories of the traditional, the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, also the Haudenosaunee, the Chippewa, the Huron-Wendat, and many other First Nations people, and now Inuit and Métis as well. And I think when we acknowledge the traditional territories that we're gathered on, it's important to also acknowledge the historic and ongoing injustice that the First People of this land face and continue to face. And it's an opportunity for us to collectively commit to remedying this injustice, to working for justice for the first people of this land. I know that your, uh, your gathering, your convention this year has a theme of starts with equity. I think that's a powerful theme. And I think it speaks to a lot of what progressive unions and progressive working groups and progressive politics is all about, starting with equity. I want to uh, put into context a little bit of, of what people are going through. And I know you know this really well. You've, you've spoken to your friends and your family and your coworkers, and you know this is what people are going through. We're all struggling with the pandemic and moving past the pandemic. It's taken a big toll on us in a lot of different ways over the past couple of years. Coupled with the pandemic and the toll that's had on us and on society, the isolation, the, the loss, is the cost of everything going up. People are seeing everything get more expensive, and that's having a significant increased burden on people. And on top of that, we've got a war in Ukraine, which makes us all feel a little safe. All of that contributes to a sense of anxiety, of worry, of fear, uncertainty for the future, and a feeling of frustration. Because despite this being such a difficult time with, with the pandemic and the cost of living having had real impacts on our lives, we continue to see, to see these super rich, the ultra wealthy, make out like bandits, make record profits. Anytime there's a cost of living increase, the inflation goes up. Working people experience a pay cut and the super rich get even richer. And so that makes people frustrated and angry and they're right to be. While people are experiencing this frustration, they start to see a rigged system that just benefits those at the top and hurts everyone else. So in this context, we look at what our political party is doing. Well, we see the conservatives have been more focused on fighting themselves with infighting and removing a leader and, and weeks and weeks of different motions to kind of get rid of their leader instead of working on the solutions that people need. And then the liberals have shown throughout the pandemic and even now that they will make great promises, will say some great words, but they will not deliver on what people need. They have to be pushed. They have to be dragged. They have to be, we have to continue to fight to get people the help they need. We have a couple of concrete examples of how they, their inaction, the inaction of the liberals hurts people and how they favor the super wealthy and that ends up hurting families. One concrete example is the liberal government was supposed to make a change in the way we set prices for medication that would have lowered the cost of medication for everyone. They caved in to the demands of the pharmaceutical lobby and backtrack from a commitment that they made to make that small change that would have made a massive difference in people's lives. And now people are going to continue to pay high prices for medication while big pharmaceutical companies are going to make record profits. So in this context with conservatives just focus on themselves, liberals not doing what's needed to help people and all this anxiety and frustration that people are feeling right now, we wanted to use our power to get help to people. And that's exactly what we did. In the tradition of New Democrats, who in minority governments, whenever we had power, used it to deliver really important things for Canadians, like Medicare, which so many Canadians are proud of, being able to go to see a doctor or go to the hospital and not worry about the bill. Or advancements around affordable housing, like previous New Democrat leaders pushed for. We are carrying on that same fight. In that same tradition, we used our power, 25 of us, out of 338 MPs in Ottawa, in this minority government, we used our power to obtain some really significant wins for people. 
I want to go through some of those wins and talk to you about what it means. Our first major win was the first major expansion of national health care in a generation with a national dental care plan. This plan is going to cover 6.5 million Canadians, potentially even more. And it's going to start this year with kids under 12 getting their dental care needs covered for free. These are kids who need it most, who don't have coverage. They will be covered this year. Additional years will see the program expanded, ultimately to cover all Canadians who do not have coverage now. And that's the 6.5 million Canadians who will get care. That's a, a significant step forward for so many people who can't get their teeth fixed, who end up sometimes in the emergency room because of pain in their teeth that is not covered by our current healthcare system. That's going to make a big difference in people's lives. We also secured major steps to making sure medication is covered for everyone. We know that we're the only country in the world where you can go see a doctor, go to the hospital, but the medication isn't covered. Every other country in the world figured out if you cover healthcare, that should also include medication so people can stay healthy and stay well. We've secured major steps forward on securing a medication coverage for all, which is another significant win. We also made some serious steps forward on building homes that people can afford. In particular, there's a program where the federal government invests in projects to build affordable housing. But the problem was the definition of affordable housing under the Liberals was insufficient, was not good enough to actually get people real help. Under the Liberals' definition, for example, here in Victoria, where the convention is taking place, their definition would say that a building project that has only 10% units that are affordable would get funding. And they defined affordable as in Victoria being about $2,000 a month for a one bedroom apartment. We think that's completely out of connect. If some folks are exasperated hearing that number, I agree. There's no way that $2,000 for a one bedroom apartment is in any way affordable. We pushed, we would have obviously gone further if we were in government, but we pushed and made that definition uh, $1,000 per month for a one bedroom apartment and that it had to be 40% of the project to receive federal funds. So a game changer in terms of where our money is going to build homes that are truly affordable for people. Obviously, there's a lot more to do, but that's a, another significant win in making sure people can find a home that's actually in their budget. We also secured real protection for workers. The Liberals had hinted at it, but then had backtracked, but we secured in our agreement anti-scab legislation. The Liberals at one point were trying to negotiate that it would only apply for locked out workers. We said, no, it has to be for all uh, scenarios, whether it's strike or lockout. And we got that. That is secured in the budget and it will be delivered very soon. And I want you to know uh, these things that we secured in this agreement that we secured for people, but we secured for people who asked us to work in this context of a minority government and give them the help that they need. I want you to feel this in your hearts, that it is a victory that all of you should share and take credit for. We would not have been able to achieve this, but for the support of COPE, your members, folks that volunteered on campaigns, your support in getting New Democrats elected and supporting our movement. I truly want you to feel in your heart when kids under 12 are getting their teeth fixed for free, that was your victory as well. When we move forward on Pharmacare, that is your victory. When we move forward on any of these aspects of this agreement that is pretty historic, I want you to feel in your bones that you were a part of this and you should take a moment and celebrate that whenever you can. But I also want to be clear that this is not a new Democrat government. We use our power in the context of a minority liberal government. Liberals are still in power. We are still, there are many things that are not being done that need to be done. There's so much more that we need to do. And I want to be very clear that in our agreement, we are not bound to agree to everything that the liberals are doing. We can push back and we have already. We will fight for more help for people and we will oppose things that we disagree with. I made it clear to the prime minister, I would never support back to work legislation. It goes against the fundamental beliefs and principles of new Democrats. I made it clear that we will vote against bills that we disagree with and we will continue to campaign and champion for more help, for more support for people. There are so many people that are still neglected and are not getting the help they need. And I want you to know you can count on me and my team, all new Democrats, to continue to fight for more, for more help for more people. We need absolutely more action on the climate crisis. Uh, it's clear that this liberal government doesn't get it and ha doesn't have the right priorities. We need more justice for indigenous communities, the first people of this land. We need more help for seniors. We need more help for people living with disabilities. There are so many people that need more help. 
We need to get greed out of our long-term care system. We need to invest more broadly in our healthcare system so it's there for us when we need it most. And we need more help for workers. Uh, we're committed for that uh, to that additional help and we're gonna keep on fighting for it. I want you to know that. I want you to know that what this agreement really is about is making sure Canadians who are struggling, who are hurting, are, are seen, that they're getting the help that they need and they see us responding to them not fighting ourselves or we're getting into fights for the sake of fighting, but truly delivering on help that Canadians need. And, and we heard people. They sent us to Parliament two times in a row in the minority government. They expect us to work together and they expect us to deliver on the help that they, that they need. And that's what we did. So I want you to know we are going to keep on fighting. This isn't a ceiling. This is a foundation. This is a, a starting point. Things that we can get done that we were able to secure but it doesn't mean that we're going to give up on anything else. We're going to keep on fighting for you. And in closing, I just want to talk a bit about being a new, new dad. Uh, I'm, I've totally become that cheesy new dad that always wants to find a way to talk about my new kid. Uh, I also want to take a moment to just reflect on how none of what I've done or what our team has done and what we've all done collectively could have been possible without my incredible partner, Gurkit and God. And now we've got a new baby in our life. And it, it certainly does change things. I think about the type of future I want to build for her. I think about my wife and I think about what type of world we want to see her grow up in. And we want her to live a life that's limitless. And so we named her Anhat. And our daughter's name literally means limitless. And we want her to say that as a young woman. When she hears her name, when she says her name, we want her to be reminded that she is limitless. Despite the fact there are still, sadly, so many barriers for women in society and in work. So we want to work towards getting rid of those barriers and build a limitless future for our daughter. But what we want for our daughters, what we want for all kids, what we want for all people, we truly want to build a world that's limitless. And in fact, we talk about the agreement and we internally as a family, we think of that as the Anhad Accord. You know, you name a, an accord after the city that was signed in and we figured that or the where the work happened. A lot of the work happened on Zoom. So calling it the Zoom Accord just didn't have the right ring to it. But, but seriously, we, we think about this as the Unhath Accord because it's one step towards building that limitless future where kids don't have to worry about whether they can get their teeth fixed or not, whether they can afford it. It's a step forward towards limitless and sure, ensuring that people can find a home that they can afford and making sure that they don't have to worry about the cost of medication. But there's so much more that we need to do to build that limitless future. And I invite you to join me and together we're going to walk a path of fighting for justice and building a future for all our kids, for everyone that is limitless. Uh, a future that starts with equity and that ends with equity in a world where everyone has the opportunity to live their fullest dreams without limit. Thank you so much. Take care. I hope you have a great rest of your convention.